Have you ever wondered if you could meal prep bread dough? Picture this. A fresh loaf of bread each week for a month and only one mess to clean up. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're taking the principles of meal prepping and we're going to make a big batch of freezer bread dough that we can thaw, shape, and bake into a fresh loaf of bread every week for a month. Hi, I'm Michelle, and I'm here to help you create your slice of country living wherever you live. Welcome to Chocolate Box Cottage, the sweet spot between old-fashioned skills and modern conveniences. Have you ever wondered if you could freeze raw bread dough, similar to meal prepping soups or casseroles that you put in the freezer to cook later? And have you wondered if you could do this with whole wheat? Well, the answer to both these questions is yes. Today we're going to make a big batch of bread dough that's specially formulated for the freezer. And instead of baking it all today, we're going to freeze it so that we can take out one piece of dough at a time and have a fresh loaf of bread each week for a month. Now this is a special recipe. It is inspired by one found in an older cookbook called Stocking Up by Carol Hupping. This is how I kept fresh bread on the table for my kids for years when they were little. Now let's go over equipment. You'll need a freezer, of course, because this is a freezer recipe. You'll need two large cookie sheets. And if they have these silicone liners, that's great. If not, you can use parchment paper or plastic wrap. You'll need two gallon-sized Ziploc freezer bags. One optional piece of equipment is a kitchen scale. If you have one of those, that's great. If not, that's fine too. And we're going to use the Anka's Room Assistant Mixer today, the Swedish super mixer that mimics hand kneading. You can also use a Bosch Universal or a KitchenAid Pro line. If you have an Artisan Series KitchenAid mixer, you'll want to cut the recipe in half. And of course, you can do this by hand in a big bowl with a wooden spoon, which is how I did it for years. Our ingredients today include three tablespoons of yeast, five and a quarter cups of lukewarm water. We're using part potato water and part milk. Potato water is simply the water that's left over from boiling potatoes to make mashed potatoes. We have a quarter cup of honey, a quarter cup of butter, four teaspoons of salt, three cups of all-purpose or bread flour, and nine cups of whole wheat flour. We're using freshly milled traditional hard red wheat flour today. The recipe is available for you at my website, chocolateboxcottage.tv. Now before you start, you want to make sure that you prepare space in your freezer for two cookie sheets. And line those cookie sheets with silicone mats or with plastic wrap and set those aside. Label your freezer bags. This freezer dough lasts for four weeks in the freezer, so count four weeks ahead on the calendar and mark that as a best by date on the bags. Dissolve the yeast in the lukewarm water right in the mixing bowl. After about five or 10 minutes, you can add the honey, the fat, and the salt. Turn the mixture on low speed, one to two o'clock, and add the white flour. If you're a new Ankus Room owner and you would like to learn how the controls on the mixer work, see one of my other Ankus Room Assistant bread making videos. I'll link those below for you. Once the white flour is incorporated, start adding the whole wheat flour a cup or two at a time. Remember you can move the arm on the mixer to help incorporate the flour. We're about at the halfway point with the whole wheat flour and you can see the dough is starting to get thick. So what we're going to do now is we're going to adjust the arm about an inch away from the side of the bowl and tighten it a bit with the knob right here at the back. The arm will still be able to move freely. It's not going to fix it in one position, but it will help with mixing the dough and we'll continue adding the flour. Now 
give the mixture a couple of minutes to make sure that it's incorporated all that flour, that it's all moistened and our dough has formed a nice mass that is pulling away from the sides of the bowl and it looks well mixed. So we're going to turn the mixer off and we're going to cover the dough and let it rest for about five or 10 minutes. This will give time for the bran particles in the whole wheat flour to absorb some of that moisture and soften. Now it's time to start kneading. Set the mixer again on low speed about two o'clock and let the mixer do the heavy work of kneading. I'm gonna set the timer all the way up to 12 minutes. Remembering that the Akras Room roller and scraper function like a pair of hands. So we're going to give it about the same amount of time kneading by machine that we would if we were kneading this dough by hand. And I'll keep an eye on the behavior of the dough. If it starts to climb up the bowl too much, I'll set the arm further away from the side of the bowl. We do want the arm to be able to move freely as the dough is kneaded. See that nice donut shape developing in the bowl? And one of the nice things about this mixer is that you can safely just reach right in and touch the dough to see how it's doing. Doughs made with whole grain flour will retain a certain amount of stickiness. That's okay. It should feel like the tacky side of a post-it note. You don't need to eliminate that stickiness. Looks like we have a nice, smooth, resilient dough. It's just really beautiful for a mostly whole wheat flour dough to see how that's shaping up. All right, we have some beautiful bread dough here. It's time to get our hands in the dough and see what's happening. Just slid right off the roller. That was nice. can use this little tool to scrape dough off the roller if it does stick. It, this tool comes with the mixer. So scrape the dough out onto an oiled work surface and we're going to give it a few turns by hand. I just can never resist touching the dough <laughs> and it just helps to bring it together and makes beautiful bread. So here we go. That was about all it took and uh, Look at that beautiful, beautiful mass of dough. Now I'm going to weigh it on the scale, uh, find the total weight, and then divide it in four for four pieces of dough for four loaves. Now you can skip this if you don't have a scale. That's perfectly fine. You can just eyeball it. Use a bench knife or a chef's knife to divide the dough into four even pieces. Now take each piece of dough and shape it into a smooth ball. So tuck all those edges underneath and make a nice smooth top. Okay, we've got four smooth balls of dough. Now just put two balls on each of two baking sheets that you've prepped ahead of time. And press them down flat with the palms of your hands to get them to be about an inch thick. Now we want to cover these in plastic wrap. You can also use parchment paper if you like. So make sure that the baking sheet is completely covered all the way across. Now I've got both sheets of bread dough prepared and I'm going to go run these over the freezer. You want to work as quickly as possible because you don't want to give the yeast time to start, make, start raising the bread dough. You want to immediately put it to sleep by getting it in the freezer quickly. So once your discs of bread dough have frozen solid, which will take about four hours, or you can leave it in the freezer overnight, you'll want to take them back out of the freezer and quickly wrap each piece individually and put two of them in your pre-labeled gallon Ziploc bags. Two will fit in each, in each bag. Get these back in the freezer as soon as you can because you don't want the dough to start thawing. Um, and then just bask in that wonderful feeling of knowing that you have prepped bread dough waiting in your freezer. 
So the next four weeks, your baking is taken care of. And then when you want to bake a loaf of bread, simply take out a package from the freezer and put it on a plate and let it thaw overnight in the refrigerator. The next day you can unwrap it, shape it, and bake. So let me show you real quick how I will shape this dough. Just put it on a lightly oiled work surface here. Um, like the smooth side down. Fold it up like a letter. Then pat it out to a rectangle shape and roll it up into a log. Get that into a greased eight and a half eight by four inch baking pan and then cover it back up with the wrappings that you just took off of the dough and let it rise at room temperature until it is almost doubled. It won't quite double. Give it about 45 minutes to an hour depending on the temperature inside your house and then use the touch test to determine when it is ready to bake. The touch test can help you determine if your loaf is ready to bake. Simply touch the top of the dough and if it leaves a slight indentation, a fingerprint in the top of the loaf, then you know it's ready to put in the oven. Have your oven preheated to 375 degrees and the rack on the middle shelf. Give it about 30 minutes or so and take it out when it's deep golden brown and done. Look at our pretty little loaf of bread. Isn't this nice? This loaf was baked from dough that I mixed up and froze three weeks ago. So this is what you can expect three weeks into this method. Once you get in the habit of mixing up a batch of freezer bread dough, you'll find that it doesn't take that much effort or create too much mess to bake bread for your family. I hope this method is as much of a time saver and a blessing to you as it has been for me and for my family. Thanks for visiting Chocolate Box Cottage today. See you next time. Bye-bye.